How's it going everybody? So what I'm gonna do is explain my fixture. I've showed it in some videos and said, let me take it off the fixture or on the fixture. So I'm gonna explain it now. So here's the fixture. I will explain to you right now how I do the wheel measurement to figure out how wide to make this fixture. All right, so on that fixture, you need to figure out how wide you want the tire from outside of bulge to outside of bulge. Now, what I do on that is mount a wheel and tire together, and then I'll take a measurement from the wheel mounting surface to this edge. The easiest way to do that is to flop this down, like that, and then just measure from the ground to that. This one, it measures six and a half inches, so then you need to make the front end 13 inches narrower on the fixture than you want from bulge to bulge. All right, so as you saw, I just measured the wheel. That one measures six and a half from the outside of the bulge to the tire or to the wheel mount surface, which is where your wheel bolts on from the hub. So I want the front end of that truck to be 94 inches wide. And that was six and a half inches per side. So 94 minus 13, that is 81 inches wide from wheel mount to wheel mount. So I basically cut some pieces of plate here with the eight on six and a half bolt pattern to match my hubs and cut them out on my plasma cam for both sides. Got some box tubing here, did little notches to make them even so then I could make them square tight with that. Got it all centered, made sure they're square with the tubes did all the measurements, and then from this surface to this surface was 81 inches. And then I made sure these were perfectly 90, and then out here I tack welded some scrap tubes or pieces of plate to hold them at 90. Once you start putting the beams, you add some weight on there, everything will sag. How I came up with this fixture is I actually saw someone on Race Desert that did something very similar, but he uses he used steel wheels instead of this. I didn't have any eight on six and a half steel wheels, so I just cut out some pieces, made sure they're nice and square, tacked some gussets on there. The wheels, as long as they aren't bent, will sit and hold it perfectly square, so you can just tack weld the wheel to this. The wheel also has a curve, so it centers in between these fixtured tubes here on both sides, so everything is straight line, so when you measure from wheel center forward to the beam pivots or anywhere, then you could actually calculate it from that. So what I did is the passenger side is over here. This is the driver's side. I'm standing at the front of the vehicle looking back. So I bolted the hub with the knuckle and the inner C on the passenger side, hub, uh, knuckle, inner C with the part of the tube. I ended up cutting the tube because I had to move the diff. So I ended up bolting that in and then to figure out the diff because I did build the diff beam first because it is the farther back one. So I measured the width of the frame from inside of frame to inside of frame. I believe it was 30 inches wide. So on the fixture here, got my width, I marked center line and then I measured over 15 inches, 15 inches and I knew that that is where the diff needed to be to clear the frame at full bump to be able to get maximum up travel. So it doesn't, the beam doesn't hit. Your drive line is done be centered between the motor, transmission, and the frame. Not out too far where it hits the frame or not in too far where it's the tranny or the motor. So I got that figured out. Then I have this piece sitting here. I figured out how much up or down I wanted the beam, the diff, to not limit my down travel. I ran it up a slight bit. So then the inner C here, the diff with the part of the tube. So then I cut them at slight angles and filled in the piece of tube here to tie in the beam diff with the inner C. So then the tube is continuous. And I actually used the piece of tube from the passenger beam that I cut off because I needed more clearance for the axle. So it worked out perfect. I ended up cutting around six inches off of this beam 
or eight inches actually off of this beam. And then I believe I used six inches to move the diff in on this side. So it worked out perfect because they're the exact same dimensions. So I was able to do that and not have to form pieces of 316s or anything to fit that height wise and the width. So that was a good benefit of this weird custom front end, but it worked out good for me. Also, if you extend say Dana 44 TTBs, you'll just have to form some pieces of 316s plate that match the dimensions of the beam tube. And then if you want four inches extension, you just make it four inches, chop it, extend that, and then when you weld it, and then I have a truss that goes over that so it's not gonna create a weak point. And then, so once I had the diff set, right? I had the diff up a few inches above stock so not to interfere with ground clearance and everything. I figured out the frame width, which was 34 inches from outside of frame to outside of frame. I wanted the beam pivots two inches outside of that and five inches down so I didn't have to worry about any uh, beam hitting for bump travel, anything like that. So once I got this beam with the diff tacked up, I ended up tacking a piece of box tubing similar to this from this inner C to the diff and then from that, I knew that the beam pivot, the uniball, needed to be slightly forward and how high it needed to be. And it needed to be slightly forward from straight in line with the diff because there is the U-joint. So I wanted to make sure everything cycles, it doesn't interfere. But I didn't want to put it too far forward because if that diff, if that beam is, the farther forward it gets, the more this passenger beam has to bend around it. So I wanted it close to the axle, but have enough clearance where everything would work. So I got that figured out, cut my plates, bent it, tacked that one in, removed the piece of box tubing that was holding that uniball cup in so I could start doing the passenger beam. Now I knew where this uniball cup was in relation to the frame, so then I set this uniball cup for the passenger beam in relation to the frame, the same amount. So I ended up tacking this on the front of the fixture, cupped it so the uniball can sit right on here. And then I figured out from the center line where this pivot was, and I knew from center line to where that pivot needed to be, and I wanted the beam to go straight to clear that diff beam, the driver beam, uniball, and then I wanted to kick it back. So I wanted that to have as least bend as possible. So I ended up tucking this uniball cup as close to that front of the beam with about a quarter inch of clearance for the truss and then a quarter inch more for that. So I did about a half inch further forward than the front of the diff just so after I ended up bending this, plating it, gusseting it, trussing it, all that stuff, everything cleared fine. So got that, bent the tubes, did it all and I was able to cut all my plates, do all the tubes, everything on the welding bench here instead of under the truck. So it was a lot easier and also forgot to mention when I did the diff, I rolled the diff for the pinion angle because I am running a double carton CV style front drive line. So I wanted that pinion angle pointed at the transfer case to reduce any kind of plunge. And then I set the caster at seven degrees on both beam ends, tack those into place. So the diff is rolled this way and the knuckle is rolled back to increase caster over his factory. So I was able to do that and then the piece that I welded between them ended up off a little bit this way or a little bit that way, but you can't really tell and once it's all welded, trust, bump stops, shocks, everything like that, you'll never notice. But I set the caster at seven degrees because that's where I like beam trucks to be riding on at ride height for the street or for off-road. It keeps the wheels from tracking straight and when you turn it and then you come back, let off the wheel, it starts to center up a lot better. Where factory only has like one, two degree caster. So it makes it nice when you turn, it's not heavy or wanting to straighten out, but when you're off-roading, I like a little more caster. So that's why I did that. Did the same on this side. And then I had these uniball cups for the inner pivots on both beams, perfectly vertical. 
because I didn't want the uniball to be misaligned at ride height for the caster or anything. So it made it a benefit for if you have massive wheel travel, 24, 26 inches of travel like this one has, you aren't gonna be maxing out the uniball at all. So did it that way, everything worked out good. Able to do these two tubes for this beam, bent it, same, I had about a quarter inch between the, I put a bolt with washer on the uniball, same with this side. So I was able to get it to clear by about a quarter inch because I didn't want too much bend on this beam because that makes it weaker. Plus the steering would have to have even more bend than it already is gonna have. So reduce the amount of bend, straighter tubes are stronger. So I was able to do that. I ran a vertical tube between those tubes here ran a vertical tube between the tubes up here, saddled in both tubes I saddled into the uniball cup instead of both going to one tube that's a little weaker joint, able to plate it all, gusset it, able to plate all the beams, able to do all of that, the truss, everything on the welding table here instead of trying to do it under the truck and then putting one beam here, doing it, hoping everything works, putting it back on there. So made it a lot easier and since I knew where axle center line was and I knew where the beam pivots I can measure off axle center line how far forward the driver's diff diff side beam mount was going to be plus the passenger beam mount from that center line so then I had center line marked for the wheelbase I was able to measure forward for the driver's beam forward even more for the passenger beam was able to tack those mounts on so that made it a lot easier to then put the beams on. I had seven degrees caster, was able to put the beams on the truck at right height, set my caster to seven degrees, and able to build the radius arms, and then cycle it, make sure everything cleared, which it did, just like I had everything built here for. And then once the radius arms were tacked into place, I was able to start cycling for steering, everything like that. So also, I knew how much up travel I wanted between the beam and the frame at ride height. So the truck's probably to have around, I believe seven and a half, eight inches of up travel at the beam to frame. So it ends up being more like 10 or 11 at the knuckle, which is good because up travel when you're doing a pre-owner off-road is your friend and it doesn't hurt to have a little bit more up travel and if proper link geometry, sway bars, all that stuff, you don't have to worry about it wanting to tip over. So that's another benefit I will discuss in future episodes how I figured out the link geometry. But from that, I was able to figure out where I wanted the beam pivot, you know, two inches outside the frame, four inches down. So I was able to draw those beam pivots on the plasma cam, cut them out from center line. I knew how far forward the two beam pivots were. So I was able to tack them in place fit the beams as I got them off the fixture onto those mounts and then cycle it after I set the radius arm to make sure everything was good. I ran a string line from side to side between the upper ball joints and made sure it was on center line, which it still was because I took all the measurements beforehand and it made everything a heck of a lot easier. So then all I had to cycle on the truck was the steering and I'll discuss that in a future video. So. Thanks for watching. I hope this fixture helps someone in the future putting different beams or beams on a truck like a Silverado, a Titan, a Tundra, whatever you're doing. This fixture has made my life a lot easier. I wish I would have known about this, you know, five, six, seven years ago when I did beams on a Tacoma. So I hope this helps you guys in the future. Someone could take this knowledge that I'm spreading here that I've learned over the years the hard way, doing things the long way, and help you realize, oh, I can just build a fixture to put my equal link beams, even the welder yourself beams. You have the beam pivots on the frame. You could take all your dimensions from floor to where you want your knuckle at right height, from your floor to the beam pivot at right height. Take the difference. If the knuckle is gonna be this says 12 inches and you want your, or say you want your beam pivot or your knuckle to be 18 inches. 
off the ground at right at, and your frame is gonna be 24 inches to the beam pivot. You know that's four inches difference. So if you do this only at 12 inches, you need to put your pivot at 16, four inches difference. Just like that, you measure between the beam pivots, set it from center line out, then you can build your beams, weld it yourself beams, whatever, and you don't have to worry about trying to set it up correct for the camber because the fixture holds your camber perfect. So you're able to connect the dots off the truck, tack it all, and then put it on the truck, cycle it, make sure everything is correct, set your caster on the fixture, everything, so then when you get it on the truck, you just have to build your radius arms at that caster that you set, and it will make your life a hundred times easier and that's what I'm doing this YouTube channel about is teaching my tips and tricks f that I've learned over the years to help someone who's working in their garage building their first pre owner or working on a lowrider doesn't really matter a lot of this stuff is just general automotive fabrication things that I teach so a fixture can work on a lowered car a lifted truck, beam swap, A-arm swap. You could even do a similar setup like this. I did a Mustang 2 front end on a 50s Buick car. So built a fixture to bolt it all at right height, tack welded the subframe with it all cambered at right height, and was able to put it under the Buick and lift this up till it was perfectly in line with the frame, centered, and was able to notch the frame for the Mustang 2 front suspension, was able to put it on and it made that job a heck of a lot easier, not having to cross measure, angled, centered, all of that stuff. I was able to actually put it together from wheel mount to wheel mount, you know, hub to hub, and was able to mock it up under the vehicle, figure out where I wanted ride height. So that vehicle, I figured where I wanted ride height would be actually was going to be lower than if I was just going to completely wing it from start. So those mounts hung below the frame a little bit. So I was able just to box that in, made it look really good. But the fixture in that case was for a lowered car, but it still made my life a heck of a lot easier. So I hope someone will take this, these pointers, this video about the fixture and apply it to whatever they're building and benefit them in the long run and get their project done and on the road so they can start mashing the whoops or dragging that bumper if they're a lowered car. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you like this type of video. And I do have a lot of videos planned for the uh, my Ford F-250 pre-runner here. So I am farther along than these videos, but I wanted to address this. Sorry for the, not making a video in the last couple weeks but been busy working, spent numerous days cycling for steering, all that. So I will do a video on how I figured out where the steering is and everything there. So hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. So when I do my next video, you get notified instead of finding about it a week later when you hear someone else talking about it or if you're just on YouTube in general, then it just pops up and you don't even know. So thanks for watching. Hope this helps someone and I'm gonna get back to work in the shop here.